But for now, I want to introduce Dave Kramer from Hachette, UK. So. Hachette, US. Hachette, US. Okay. Awesome. Oh, and of course, the computer went to sleep. Hi, I'm Dave Kramer, and I'm a standardista. I work on web and ebook standards for Hachette, one of the big five dinosaur publishers in the United States. Before there were browsers, before there were books, there were stories. 10 or 20,000 years ago, one could live nicely on just food and stories. Food was mostly vegetables, mostly gathered, and one of the biggest technological breakthroughs in prehistory was using a bag or a net or a pot to carry, to carry what you gathered back to camp. We still need food and stories. As we wander the internet gathering images, video, and text to make stories, how do we carry them back to camp? How do we share them with our community? We need a bag to hold our small stories to turn what we gathered into something new. If you look inside an EPUB, you'll find something called a container.xml. Can we use modern ideas of containers and manifests to hold together the pieces of our stories? Can new developments in web and ebook standards help us assemble narratives out of raw internet stuff? Let's find out. I remember writing that, the abstract to this talk, in an IRC channel with my friend Svea Siegman. How apt that we were using a prehistoric internet technology from 1988. As we were pondering what to talk about at Books and Browsers, I happened to reread an essay by Ursula K. Le Guin. It was called The Carrier Bag Theory of Fiction from the lovely collection Dancing at the End of the World. Oh, and I just scrolled everything out of the way. I'm sorry. Le Guin wrote about how we think of stories and even culture as needing heroes and conflict, stories about men killing wild beasts or wild men with spears. So long as culture was explained as originating from and elaborating upon the use of long, hard objects for sticking, bashing, and killing, I never thought that I had or wanted any particular share in it, she wrote. But is that really the only story? It turns out that early humans got most of their food from plants, from gathering, from women. And perhaps the earliest and most useful tools were not knives and spears, but bags and baskets. If you haven't got something to put it in, food will escape you, even something as uncombative and unresourceful as an oat. The hunters got all the press, but women did all the work. Sound familiar? <laughs> of course, unlike stone, objects made of fibers, wood, or skin tend not to last for 30,000 years. But even then, we see stories were important. Can you imagine what the story of this figure is, a ceramic statue from 29,000 years ago? But there always has been a different kind of story, the life story. Back to Le Guin. If it is a human thing to do to put something you want because it's useful, edible, or beautiful into a bag or a basket or a bit of rolled bark or leaf or a net woven of your own hair, and then take it home with you, home being another larger kind of pouch or bag, a container for people. And then later on you take it out and eat it or share it or store it up for winter or put it in the medicine bundle or the shrine or the museum, the holy place, the area that contains what is sacred. And then the next day you probably do much the same again. If to do that is human, if that's what it takes, then I am a human being after all, fully, freely, gladly for the first time. I would go so far as to say that the natural proper fitting shape of the novel might be that of a sack, a bag. A book holds words, words hold things, they bear meanings. A novel is the medicine bundle holding things in a particular powerful relation to one another and to us.
Le Guin, of course, is my favorite author by far. Yeah, yeah, there. She gave a great speech at the National Book Awards a couple of years ago about the publishing industry. So for the last few years, I've been thinking a lot about ebook formats. EPUB has been very successful, but it doesn't exactly inspire statues, sonnets, or declarations of love. I come to this wonderful conference because I want books and browsers, but the web doesn't know how to deal with collections of documents. And there I was, reading Le Guin's essay about containers and baskets and bags full of stories, and in that moment, this talk was born. Oh, I hate double screens. Books and browsers, it's interesting that we call what we do browsing. It's kind of sad that we dismiss it, consider it a waste of time. Some of the best times of my life has been in libraries following a thread from book to book, threads that could turn into stories or just dead ends. The usual result was a big pile of books and a feeling of joy at the vastness of the world. Digesting all those books could take years. We are thankful for the strange creatures called authors who do that and make new books. I digress, therefore I am. Thinking about browsing, I was reminded of the prototypical browsers, goats, symbols of anarchy, mainstays of mythology, and central characters in one of the most unusual and interesting books I've encountered while wandering through libraries. It's called Goat Walking by a Buddhist Quaker Jewish outlaw philosopher named Jim Corbett. He writes of finding wisdom in the desert, of the utter freedom and self-reliance that only seems possible in a nomadic life, and of the moral necessity of packing up and heading to the hills when a society becomes too oppressive, just as the Hebrews, the people of the book, left Egypt. Sadly, this, like the other book I mentioned, is not available as an ebook. Goats can digest nearly anything, not just the sweet grass. They turn weeds and thorns into milk, meat, wool. They are survivors, they are robust, they can prosper where a little else can. In web terms, they are responsive, they are adaptable, they prosper in arid environments devoid of broadband and JavaScript. Jim Corbett and his goats were wandering through the Sonoran Desert in Arizona in the 1980s. He learned of the refugees from Central America who were fleeing violence and crossing into the U.S. out of a private moral necessity and started to help them, founding the Sanctuary Movement. I read this book long before I had any personal ties to, to Central America. There's some goats. I skipped over that one. My son is adopted from Guatemala. He's our only child, very self-contained. He can be happy without an internet connection. He is full of stories. Like the goats, he is both wild and domesticated. As I venture out into the web and browse, I want to collect what doesn't immediately fit in my stomach. But a bookmark or a link is not adequate to the task. I don't want to remember where those berries are. I want the berries themselves. Coffee, the most important beverage for the technology industry. I want to collect, connect, digest, and perhaps then I can create something from what I've found. What kind of bag can hold the things I find and make on the web? Make me a mixtape, said Katie Zhu at the last Books and Browsers. DJs make art by collecting and ordering songs, hanging an art show, programming a concert, collage, still lifes, quilts, anthologies, short story collections, story cycles, magazines, hip hop samples, older music, and we write small stories ourselves all the time. Tweets, comments, posts, articles. All these shiny things collected on the way to somewhere else. It's a browsing history, a list of links that us old folks used to have on our web pages. Wait, maybe we just need a list and we can go from there. Lists are related to containers. A shopping list turns into a shopping cart, which ends up in shopping bags. Even better is that lists can have an order. That's one thing that makes a story different from a website. A story has a beginning and a middle, a middle and an end. A story has order, has a sequence. We can only speak one word at a time. When I browse, I choose my own adventure. But when I make a story, when I become an author, 
I find the thread through an infinite sea of words. I decide what happens next. So with all this new technology, can we actually turn a path into a narrative, turn that list into a story? EPUB dates from the end of the 20th century. The web has changed a lot since then. JavaScript is ubiquitous. Devices are mind-bogglingly powerful. Browsers are interoperable, more or less, in ways that ebook folks only dream of. But the network is still sometimes crappy or even non-existent. And to make a book, doc, document, publication, or story, we need to solve some fundamental problems. Where did you go, cursor? There we go. Skipping over the lovely quilt. So we have the boundary problem. What's part of the story and what isn't? The offline problem, I want to read when I can't find or can't afford a network connection. The reading problem, I want the browser to make reading long things easy to help me understand, to adapt to my needs. The layout problem, books are art and craft, design and typography serve content and understanding. The portability problem, I want to take my books with me, send them to my friends, save them, possess them. The security problem, how does portability affect the web's origin-based security model? The human problem, how do I make this technology human-friendly, simple, hackable, rel relatable for us, social animals that walk upright, use fire, and tell stories? EPUB had to solve these same problems 20 years ago, but we can take advantage of 20 years of progress to make ebooks simpler. Have them consist entirely of web stuff with no custom XML. Make them easier to work with. Look at how much work Liza, Micah, or the Redium folks have to do to paginate, annotate, synchronize, customize. So what can the web offer us? Much of what we need is built around the idea of progressive web applications. Progressive web apps work offline, can be saved to the home screen, are secure, and work across the range of devices. They have, we have some new core technologies to work with. And I'm getting faster, yay. We have the web application manifest, sort of one file to bind them all. There'll be a bit more about that in a second. Service workers for offline and network interaction, web annotations for notes, bookmarks, and so on, and various new CSS modules like Grid, Flexbox, Overflow, and Shapes for better layout. This presentation itself is such an experiment. My web page is essentially a reading system, metaphorically made of string and tape, with an iframe for my story. All I need is the webcon itself, plus one simple manifest file that tells me what's in my bag. And it can be almost any content, HTML, text, video, pictures, sounds. Like the goats, we're not picky. So this is all based on extending the web application manifest. This is the heart of the progressive web app, a place to say what's in your app and how to display it. We just want to add a few new lists, one listing what order the pieces go in, like the oddly named spine in EPUB, and one listing all the other stuff you need, like fonts and scripts and images and stuff. So, um, Here's an example of this is the manifest for this presentation, in fact. And I didn't even have to make a slide of this. I just pointed the iframe at the source here, and it displays it. That's really cool. EPUB would choke on something like that. So I solve the offline problem with service workers. When my browser asks for the next chapter of the story, the service worker intercepts the network request, and I can program it to do cool things. If the network isn't there, I can send back a local copy. Did I skip one? Actually, my service worker, my service worker file is named kroner.js. This is George Kirscher, who I hope most of you know, who's done more for accessibility and ebooks than anyone in the world, and Kroner is his service dog.
The reading problem is hard, though. I want to be able to customize my reading experience, navigate easily through complex structures, have a night mode, make notes and highlights, and so on. My Toyo reading system here does have a slick night mode, though, using CSS filters. Where did my cursor go? This actually re reverses everything. The crazy thing is this works on video, much to my surprise. You know, I can make the text bigger or smaller. I can find the table of contents. I can go to the next or previous section. I'd have it do more if I was a real programmer. I can't make notes, highlight things, or annotate, but I'm hoping the new web annotation standard will say the day. The layout problem is also hard, but there are signs of hope. If I look at this in Safari, you would see, you know, beautiful drop caps on the, on the text and uh, the, the content is actually paginated. It's a bit rough, but it comes from three lines of CSS. That's the service worker. I had things in the wrong order. And here's the CSS with the overflow property. Now, if only these things would work in every browser, but that's indeed another story. About the portability problem, remember my service worker which can do smart things with network requests? I have a, I have a download button here. Where am I? Where are we going? If I click save, that actually saves everything to the local browser cache. And it worked miraculously. And then I click download and that actually packages up. That takes my bag full of stories and makes a zip file out of it and sort of preserves the entire original structure so I could send it around. Um, the security problem, I, haven't, I don't have any progress on that. I'm an idealist, but mixtapes don't mix with copyright law. The web security model is based on origins and is suspicious of travelers, scripts from far away. Your papers, please. The human problem is the hardest of all, as the old technology is so brilliant. Books have so much in common with that 29,000-year-old figurine. We can hold them, carry them, worship them. Their very structure helps us understand. Their materials are commonplace, understandable, yet they contain magic. They fit our hand, our gaze, our mind. How can we anchor digital objects in the real world in our physical animal understanding? I don't have those answers. I hope some of you are at least thinking about those questions. So here we are at Books and Browsers in 2016 with all this new web technology. And I can easily imagine a feature in your browser where making a book is as easy as making a bookmark. Just click a button to add a new chapter to your story. And so we turn the playlist into the mixtape and the web becomes a net that catches the story. Thank you.